Hello, everybody. Uh, tonight, I wanted to discuss uh, really uh, the most important aspect of the ocean in the Western Hemisphere and look at some of the first images of what that means um, in terms of the Caribbean and uh, the bridge between the North and the South Hemispheres. There's quite a lot of information here. Um, we're gonna go through and try to look at all of this. Uh, there's quite a lot here. So this is the farming map that also includes the population in blue. Um, you'll see I've circled quite a number of different farming locations there. This is the primarily river map with also the aquifers. So there's quite a number of aquifers here that kind of redefine uh, what the country's shape should look like, at least in terms of water. And then here is kind of the soil map. There was someone that wanted to look carefully at the soil map and I've actually learned quite a lot. Uh, just looking from the soil maps, you can see there's different floodplains and all kinds of soils that you may not have been familiar with. And here is primarily just the focus on the population map, uh, also with the aquifers, so kind of looking at some new areas, uh, particularly in Central America, down here, Honduras, Nicaragua, and heading into Panama, and then Colombia, and so on. So there's quite a lot there, as well as just population, uh, particularly uh, in the Dominican Republic and Haiti uh, that you might not have been aware of, as well as kind of some population coming through uh, Caracas and Venezuela. So, and then we're going to look pretty detailed. Uh, I had a lot of fun kind of zooming in on the last video uh, at each one of these cities so you can kind of see what's going on at night and how that's all related. Uh, it's very interesting to see essentially how the electrical grid works and how that relates to modern development uh, and here is the lightning map it's really a great way to understand the weather in any region around the world you can basically use this to understand subtle details that might not be visible uh, for example in just the climate map so this is the copenhagen climate classification map and it does show quite a lot of these red zones in here, which you don't see at all really in the United States. It's actually fairly uniform temperatures and climate in the United States, with the exception of Florida and also Puerto Rico down here. And then Mexico has actually quite a variety of climates uh, that you don't really see uh, anywhere else in the Western Hemisphere. So basically there's a lot of details to that and we probably need to zoom in on all these. I'm gonna try to do that a little bit more on tonight's discussion and basically look at some more of the details, uh, some of the surprising details about each one of these cities and just how everything is connected. There's just some new information that I've learned after studying this. I guess the main thing uh, that I was really surprised at is uh, looking at the details in population uh, and quite a number of other things. So you'll see this area here uh, that I'm basically talking about around Guatemala City and heading further south of Guatemala City, basically into San Jose, Costa Rica, and Panama. So there's basically actually quite a lot of population on the western side here, whereas even what we notice in other parts of the Caribbean, there's quite a different uh, population layout than you may uh, understand previously. And then here's the soil map. And you can see there's definitely some similarities and differences. You see this purple stuff, which is kind of floodplain or former floodplain uh, happening quite a lot in Florida. So if you're familiar with the swamps in Florida, you'd actually be very familiar with what's going on in Cuba, as well as many other parts of South America. And you can even see it. there's this orange dirt that shows up just north of Florida, primarily in the jungle region. So there's quite a lot to understand there this is just really beautifully complicated i just loved it it i could diagram this all day so it's really interesting to see essentially how the caribbean works in terms of the geology so there's quite a lot of stuff going on underneath the water you can kind of see that uh in this map you can see quite a lot of little bumps and different 
things that you might not have expected, particularly in the Bahamas and some other areas. So this doesn't really happen in a whole lot of places around the world. As you can see, the coastline is fairly uh, straightforward along most of the regions here. Um, and then the Caribbean actually gets pretty complicated as well as Oceania and Southeast Asia. So this gives us some picture of how the fish may live in Southeast Asia and actually quite bright blue waters as you see here which we don't really see in southeast asia they call it the caribbean blue so we're gonna look at some of these traffic patterns there's definitely some coastal stuff going on in mexico guatemala honduras that you might not be familiar with of course everyone's familiar with the panama canal uh, but actually that's uh quite a lot of traffic there but actually there's quite a number of other ports um all around the caribbean that are very busy uh including uh, those around Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Haiti, Jamaica, and of course, Florida. So try to look at that there. Uh, the mountain ranges are actually quite unique because they have these weird gaps and separations. I was talking with someone about this earlier today, kind of trying to measure the distance between each of these mountain ranges and also comparing that to modern earthquakes and seeing the uh, distance between how we see the actual formation of the land versus where the earthquakes are can maybe tell us a lot about what's going on deep underneath the earth. So these mountain ranges are actually quite interesting and beautiful. You'll see Cuba actually be, is actually quite flat except for the south side. So it's actually a lot like Florida and even the Yucatan Peninsula. It's quite similar to Florida. Um, however, there's quite serious mountain ranges in Mexico, and we'll try to look at some of that. We're going to look at the exports and imports. There's definitely some new questions like in shipping. So in Asia, basically, uh, <laughs> excuse me, Korea was building like 75% of all the boats around the world. And now many of the shipping companies, because they're islands, you would think that they would actually have quite a lot of, to do in shipping. So they're actually doing most of their work in travel and tourism and actually a significant amount in ship build, shipbuilding. So that was kind of interesting to see. On the import side, they're actually also importing ships. So there's maybe importing and exporting different parts from the ships as well as vehicles. So you didn't really see that on the export side, but you do see them importing cars. So actually it would be nice to see almost all that go to shipping and you also see plastics and some other problems. The map actually was really surprising in terms of Europe. So we see um, quite a lot of influence uh, in Europe on the exports as well as on the import side. There's actually even more influence on Europe on the import side, which I thought was particularly interesting. China being so far away, also being a major importer. So that's also kind of surprising when Brazil maybe should be taking some of that import because they're just closer. It's a lot of waste in fuel energy and we're going to look at all the details there's actually a surprising trend that we didn't see on other parts of southeast asia southeast asia is still expanding quite a lot whereas the caribbean is actually kind of stagnation or even dropping so you can see uh, since 2008 which is ten, a decade or 10 years it's quite possible that exports have actually haven't been doing so good and even on the import side so actually the caribbean has been struggling as you know um, there's no government right now in Haiti. Uh, there's a lot of stress on the political environment as well as Jamaica and some other areas. Cuba is communist. So actually, it's pretty complicated in South America uh, for the political system right now, particularly in Venezuela as well. And so some interesting things. And But this is actually the uh, earthquake map. And you'll be very surprised to see that so much earthquake going on around Puerto Rico. I was shocked. I zoomed in and looked at very detailed pictures of what's going on there, and that's very interesting to see. It's actually on the south side of Puerto Rico. And here's kind of the wildlife biodiversity map. Again, it doesn't show the ocean. There actually should be huge amounts of biodiversity in this region, but because of population, that's actually changed dramatically. So you can see in Mexico, uh, there's still some biodiversity there, and then down in Panama and Believe it or not, Costa Rica has a lot of biodiversity. So that actually really should be looked at carefully. They've actually flushed a lot of that out of, excuse me, 
Colombia has actually should have the most biodiversity in the world, uh, even more than most parts in Africa. As you can see on this map, Africa actually has quite a lot less biodiversity than the Amazon jungle. And there's only a small sliver in the back part of the jungle, the deepest part of the Congo, that really has that biodiversity there, and that's even being threatened. There's a little pocket right there as well. But essentially, there's a lot that's changed on the biodiversity map. That's, this map could definitely, I've been using this map in every single discussion that I've had. And the real biodiversity map probably depends on climate as well as soil. So the climate map actually tells us, you can see this pink zone. It's really the only part of the entire United States is Florida. And that's kind of the, um, they have some wildlife preserves and some areas down in Southern Florida that are some of the biggest national parks. But basically, a lot of this all should be very wildlife friendly. So there's just some huge questions in here. In Costa Rica, you saw that being one of the most significant, but actually it should be in Colombia. But the question is, why isn't there? And that's basically because of population. So we'll be looking at that as well as some of the geology. It's probably important to piece together the puzzle yourself. So as we're looking at this, I posted all the links to all the maps and I have a whole kind of listing of the maps on my website here that you can grab and download even more than what we're gonna be talking about tonight. I'm gonna just pause this for a moment and you can kind of take a look at what's been going on and try to take a deep dive into everything tonight. Thank you so much, I'll be right back. So probably one of the first maps I wanted to start people with is just to understand the power that Mexico has over the entire Caribbean and really in terms of population. So there's just a lot of people in Mexico in general, particularly in Mexico City, as well as Guadalajara, if you're not familiar with that. And there's kind of a new coastal region all forming along Mexico that's basically farmers uh, moving to the coast. So there's basically very beautiful farmland and that's all kind of changing the uh, shape of what's going on in Mexico. So we can kind of see that in some of these other maps that I have here. Uh, here's the farm map. So you can kind of see the farm map and population map all in one thing. And we'll I'll kind of zoom around here so you can see. So the United States is pretty heavily farmed, as you can see from this map up there. Um, and we don't really want to see that happen to the jungle. And as you get closer to the jungle, there's definitely a lot of farmland here in Venezuela heading out um, and you can see Colombia almost heavily farmed and populated already. So that uh, raised some very big questions about what's going on there. And then almost all of Cuba has been farmed or populated. So uh, that's another big question there. And you can see the vast population. So there's basically a country dividing line between uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti. And it's basically extremely populated on the Haiti side. So that's an interesting point to make, but you can see here uh, how important this new population is, basically heading from Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, all the way down to Costa Rica and Panama. So I think I diagrammed that pretty detailed here and we'll take another look at that just so you can see. So basically this is primarily the population map and you can kind of see this is the new farmland that I'm talking about. And actually 90%, 70% or more can come from just this region in Mexico. So a lot of the farm food produce in the wintertime travels thousands of miles all the way up to the United States. And it's really the only way uh, that they get food is from Mexico here in the United States. So, um, And actually the population you can see is almost as large as the farmland in many of these regions. And sometimes it covers itself up so it's hard to see if it's population or farmland or what. So you basically have to take both of them as population and then this becomes the population map because there's probably farmers living or working in all these farmland areas. So it kind of tells us some details that would not otherwise be able to see. So quite a lot of interesting problems are actually developing in Venezuela because of that farmland question. And really Colombia should have really started to work more with Mexico on getting their food from Mexico as well as Honduras and some other possibilities, um, Nicaragua and some other things along this peninsula here, they could have gotten their food 
uh, there, um, as well as getting some of the food locally. So there are some ideas about moving out of Colombia and out of the jungle, essentially, to other parts of South America that may be wiser. Um, the the uh, soil map does tell us quite a lot as well because what's happening is they're essentially farming on the floodplains. So that's basically the best soil and that, that's why you have this purple region here um, that essentially is some of the best soil and actually Cuba gets a lot of that as well. And there's actually quite a lot of this blue stuff here, which actually means that this peninsula, basically there's two peninsulas, there's the Yucatan and then this other peninsula and some very new cities coming in here. If you looked at this other map, you'll see there's a very big city right there as well as here. So these are basically port cities that head out into the Caribbean and there's separate countries even like Belize and even smaller countries in these areas. So. Uh, basically, this is all brand new farmland. It's some of the only farmland left on the planet and also some of the only farmland in the Caribbean. You can see here Cuba being heavily farmed out. So uh, what I wanted to look at here is more on the population side. So what I tried to emphasize here is some new details, basically how important that West Coast is. And actually, a lot of people think Panama is super important, but you have to kind of zoom in on each of these cities to kind of see. Let's do that a little bit to see on the population side. Let's see if I got a pure population map. Here we go. So this is primarily just a population map that we're looking at. Um, and what I want to start is basically in Puerto Rico and look at what we can see here. There's going to be a little bit of delay unfortunately, because it is a lot of data to load up. Um, but I'll zoom around here and see what we can see. And it's actually quite blurry on this map for some reason. I don't, there we go. It's starting to get a little more clear. Um, so on this, as you zoom in, you can start to see some of the beautiful details about what's going on in Cuba. So some of the problems that are experienced here is that the population is still heavily centered around well, it's not necessarily centered, but there's quite a lot of population in Havana. And it basically all spins off of that and goes down the middle of the island and then heads over to kind of the opposite side of Cuba with a major city being opposite of Havana. And then you have Jamaica over here and Haiti and Dominican Republic. So you can really start to trace how the road system may work as well as all the population in the area. Now, I wanted to zoom out a little bit on this and show you. So this island chain basically heads over to Venezuela. And here we have Trinidad and Tobago. And you see it's actually on one side of the island, not the other. And this happens because the hurricanes will come in and essentially wipe out all the windward islands. So the hurricanes are a very big factor. If you're familiar with the East Coast, it's, it's no joke. The hurricanes can have 150 mile an hour winds and that happens every year for sure you're going to have a hurricane at least one several even sometimes per year so uh, that can be devastating for the island so basically uh, a lot of this a lot of this stuff on this side of the island this is all the windward that's why the cities are basically on the west side so the interesting part is that how does this caribbean stuff work well, it actually really relates on Venezuela, right? So Venezuela, the coastal, this all seems to be heading out to the ocean and a lot of people are moving out of Bogota and Medellin and heading to coastal cities. If you watch uh, famous YouTubers and different people posting stuff on the internet, a lot of that new population will be heading into the ocean front here. Now on the Panama side, I've actually specifically studied this in pretty good detail. It's really, it's actually becoming unaffordable even to visit Panama. However, there's another city on the opposite side of Panama, which is the Caribbean side, which is pretty much all abandoned. So it can be very dangerous. There's actually some very dangerous places to travel to but that can be extremely affordable. Um, so there's some interesting questions where you have very expensive place to live versus really poor, all in the same country and all on the same river, essentially crossing the Panama Canal. And then here you can see some of those details um, basically showing San Jose. Again, this is one of the problems we also saw in Cuba. So the capital, Costa Rica, is actually 
in the mountain ranges in here and that's because it is colder up in the hills so a lot of people would actually prefer the colder temperature and that happens in Bogota here it's not actually an ocean city and Mendelin it actually can be cold like 60 degrees um, you know you can get snow up in the mountains even so a lot of people don't like to live along the coast but that is still kind of changing many of the tourists often do go to the coast but you often fly into san jose so you'll see that that's one of the reasons why you have the cities not directly along the ocean front is because of the temperature so uh there's actually a tremendous amount of mountain ranges all throughout here and actually i would expect a lot of this uh new uh alternatives to for example cancun is over here on the caribbean side but there's acapulco and some other puerto vallarta and some other areas along the west coast of mexico that actually is really much like california so if you're familiar with the landscape along california it's actually even more beautiful down in mexico so i oftentimes can't understand why people are paying so much for rents in california when mexico is so much better in terms of how it looks and the environment and everything so here you start to get up in the united states the bay area and populations there but this is primarily a caribbean discussion so i want to basically look at that primarily uh you could see there's actually houston texas is super important um to the whole discussion as well as both sides of florida so there's tampa bay and then miami here that is super important to what goes on it's actually a one-day sail to you can sail from miami to here in under 24 hours so i think that's important factor to get around here so anyway so but what as you zoom out and you look at the overall picture let me get back to that here you start to see how everything is all connected right and some of these new areas that you may not have been aware of are actually super important and look at the vast size of this river this is actually an unknown part to many people it's actually separate from the amazon it's primarily the reason for venezuela's existence is this whole separate river dumping right into the caribbean the windward waters and the hurricanes will actually pull all that polluted water from these major cities because even if they are up into these mountains it will drain down here and travel all the way down the stream for thousands of miles and that actually ends up affecting the ocean front here when the hurricanes pull in that water so it's a hugely important <laughs> fact there so uh let's relook at this farming map here i can zoom in on that and see a couple more details on this map so uh, i am going to try to take a look at the chat to see if anybody has any kind of questions while this is all going on so if you have any questions just let me know so on this map you can see the mississippi river actually has quite a lot of that farming and that will all be very this is the bluest part that's the heaviest farming as well as some of these coastal regions here so that is really important to think about when you remember that the river system here was actually very vital so it's likely that a lot of this will change to farmland and you basically need to look at both it's hard to get both the farmland maps and everything on one because it's just starts to collide into everything else but here you can start to see some of those rivers systems but definitely as we saw up in the united states the farming is very vital on mississippi in fact that's perhaps the most vital farmland in all of the united states is down along that mississippi river there so that's going to happen really everywhere you see all these rivers kind of coming off of the yucatan peninsula you don't see so many rivers actually in uh cuba but they do get quite a lot of rain so on this map here you can kind of measure this by looking at these red zones and the pink zones which you really have some of the best farmland you get sugar cane farming as well as rice farming down in florida so you can basically do whatever you essentially have it like in the united states you typically only have one season but in these areas you can actually do two or even three crops per year so that's a tremendous amount of farming that you can do so you basically multiply the land by two or even three i would hate to see someone farm three times a year and devastate the crops but you can do that 
um, which is quite interesting in terms of the farmland, particularly in the Caribbean. So it's a lot more efficient. You just have more light and you have more rain and water and everything. So it's, uh, but at the same time, we have to be very cautious. So one of my hopes is that we can move a lot of this farmland that we see down in Venezuela and Colombia and even in Panama up to Mexico and this region because it's just further away from the jungle and to try to keep uh, that balanced out. So that's a very complicated but important project to do. So let's just pause this again. And if you have any questions, you can let me know and I'll try to discuss those topics. Thanks. So next I wanted to look at this uh, geological map really quick and see, so you could just kind of see how complicated it is and actually heads all the way out to Bermuda. There's kind of a weird island out there and you can see because the undersea geology is actually quite different. Um, so I marked that quite clearly out in the other diagram, but there's definitely this pink zone. Um, some of this uh, is definitely different types of rock. Some of it is more volcanic and some of it is less volcanic. And to really understand that, you have to kind of look at the geology maps to see what is going on. So here you can see there's quite a lot of stuff happening in through Belize and this new city, San Pedro Sula, uh, essentially heading off into Guatemala and El Salvador. So that geology basically tells you that there's a lot of biodiversity in this region as well as important things to understand about how the earth moves and this is actually a very interesting fault line that goes really deep and goes into the cayman islands in that region so you can see there's a very strange fault kind of separating these and it actually splits off and goes through here if you look at some other plate images and you can see there's almost a connection between cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula, but it kind of splits off as well as the United States. So that's very interesting as well to kind of look at. So how can you use all this information to help you uh, either travel or work with different places in the Caribbean and essentially uh, work together on Earth? Um, so. The way that I would do that uh, is you can definitely look and use the, uh, this is the export and import uh, listing. Now they had, I'm using two digit codes. It's actually probably better to use four digit codes. So when you're actually doing this, you can do that. Uh, and then you can build a visualization to find out exactly what they're trading. And you can actually search, this is for the entire Caribbean, but you can search for specific countries uh, sometimes some of the countries are so small that you can't even get a visualization for them. Um, however, this can tell us what's going on. And then further, you can do net. So this is the profit. So basically, they have the total sales, but then the net means the profit done. So if you're on the export side, you want to export stuff from the country. That means if you're producing something. So essentially, it's almost 60% tourism in the in the Caribbean, so that's a huge factor. As well as on this side, on the imports, the net is the profit. So basically they're making a lot of profit from food imports. So if you're basically sending food from Mexico, for example, you can probably make quite a bit of money there sending food. So part of the problem, as we noticed, is that there is quite a lot. Let me see here, let's look at this map here. So. Um, what map do we want to look at here? So from a farming perspective, there's quite a lot of farming being done in Cuba. However, in the rest of the Caribbean, which is actually all of these islands, there is not a whole lot of farming. So uh, in general, that's where you could probably make most of your money is from doing stuff like that. So the other way that can be really fun uh, is essentially looking at the population maps and or the nighttime imagery and kind of seeing how every different part of the Caribbean is interconnected. So what I mean by that essentially is that this is that we can start to see different relationships between different cities through this nighttime imagery. So I'm gonna zoom in and we're just gonna look at Puerto Rico for instance. 
and you can start to see how each one of these areas are kind of interconnected and there's new cities that you may not have been aware of and you can see essentially how that's all related and this is similar to the population map but it's more towards electricity and there's a neighbor of mine that's actually from puerto rico and he told me one of the worst things about living in puerto rico is actually electricity and his computer oftentimes will just die out while he's using it who knows if my computer will actually crash right now but you can also see this um it's not exactly like population but it does show you where there is significant amounts of electricity and you can use that to kind of study each of the cities and i definitely recommend doing that if you have a chance so i think i'm going to try to close up this conversation i think we looked at just about everything on these maps you'll definitely find all different kinds of ways of understanding the caribbean and there is quite a lot of work to be done on the wildlife side and what i would definitely recommend is no matter what you're doing if you're traveling to any one of these places in the caribbean definitely try to do your homework and figure out how to make some friends understand what's going on <clears throat> um, obviously the climate is very different uh, and the wildlife situation is very important in the caribbean so that was one of the main reasons why i even did this study in the first place and you can definitely see others uh, you know traveling to different parts of the caribbean can be very different in terms of mountain ranges and that could be very exciting or actually very boring depending on <clears throat> the mountain ranges so that could definitely help you out a lot as well as looking at cruises and trying to see about different shipping routes there's definitely some cities here and from what i understand actually can be quite dangerous in some of these areas so you want to be very cautious even though there is a major seaport it can still be very difficult unless you have a group of people that you're traveling with and i would definitely recommend that so here is some other ideas about how things are interconnected one thing that i really wanted to stress is how important florida is to cuba as well as the bahamas and the rest of this caribbean chain island chain so actually there's a huge amount of wildlife diversity and that actually is related the situation in florida and all along the coast of texas down to mexico can actually be very similar and related and it actually gets to be much wetter and uh, nicer as you get down to mexico so it's quite dry in texas but there are quite a lot of really nice places uh, along the central american island chains and again you definitely want to take a careful look as we did about the population map and take a look at what's going on there are some different cities on the inland side some of them can be very safe some of them can be very dangerous so you just want to kind of do some homework on all that Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the study. Let me know if you got any questions. I'd be glad to take a look at things with you. Thank you so much. See you later. So again, I just wanted to thank everybody for taking a look at the time to try to study the planet. Um, There's just so many awesome things that we can understand. And basically, this is just the beginning. So I really laughed. I was working on this presentation you know, over the past few years just trying to understand more about our planet and it just leads to more and more really awesomeness and unbelievable things not only about our planet but about the entire universe so it's really fun and i really hope this will help everybody on our planet especially work with the wildlife and the fish and clean air and clean water and all that so i think we can really make things so fun so thank you so much